Hi, my name's Louisa, I'm the Orthopaedic Case Manager. And I'm Kira. I'm one of the physios. Uh, we're going to run through uh, what to expect when you come in for your joint replacement surgery. What is a total hip replacement? The hip is a ball and socket joint. It's designed to move freely in most directions. It's made up of the femur, which is the long bone of your thigh, which has a ball-shaped bone on the end. This sits within the pelvis, or its socket, and is shaped like a cup. With a total hip replacement, the diseased parts of the bone are replaced with a prosthesis. You have the stem of the prosthesis, which is inserted down into the shaft of your femur. It has a metal ball on the end. This will sit within the new socket, which is made up of a metal cup with a plastic or a ceramic liner, and this allows the joint to move smoothly on itself. Why you might have a total hip replacement? So the most common cause is osteoarthritis, which is the gradual wearing down of cartilage around the joint over a period of time. Rheumatoid arthritis is similar, however, it's an inflammatory condition where the body attacks its own cartilage surrounding the joints. Trauma can be things like falls or high impact accidents where parts of the bone might fracture and the surgeon decides to do a joint replacement to fix it. It is a lifestyle procedure. It aims to get you up doing things that you might find difficult doing now and give you a little bit better quality of life. The prosthesis is estimated to last between 15 to 25 years and with the new technology and way surgeons are operating, it's closer to that 25 years. You can discuss these risks with your surgeon at any time, one of them being DVT, which is a clot that can form. Uh, we have ways of reducing these, the risks of that clot forming, uh, one of them being by wearing these stockings. They are elasticised. You'll be fitted with these when you come in for surgery. They help with the blood flow back up to the heart. They also help reduce the swelling. Uh, so there's a couple of ways that they can help. Another way is with these compression pumps. They either sit on your feet or around your calf. They'll be attached to a machine at the end of your bed. And for the first 24 to 48 hours, they'll inflate and deflate uh, while you're in bed, uh, which acts like you're walking, which also helps with the blood flow back up to the heart. Other ways are via medication, uh, those being uh, injectable, so clexane, which is an injection that will go into your stomach, uh, or via tablet form. So you may get injections when you're in hospital and you may need to do those uh, when you're discharged from hospital as well. Otherwise, uh, you'll receive tablets. Uh, they all are effective ways of reducing the risks of DVTs. Then we have uh, bleeding. So we'll monitor your hemoglobin levels in the days after your surgery. We also monitor your observations, so your blood pressure and your heart rate. Uh, these can all show us uh, what's happening uh, within your body uh, in that post-operative period, so we keep a close eye on that. Sometimes you may need to have a blood transfusion. Uh, this is rare, but it can happen. Uh, stiffness is another uh, risk or uh, something that can occur. Uh, one, mainly because you're, you are having an operation, you're getting these nice new metal shiny bits in your body. They sometimes just need time to work into their groove. Uh, also, again, you're not moving around quite so much. So the physios will come in and show you some exercises to do while you're in bed, which uh, help uh, ease that stiffness. So when you get to get up out of bed and walk, um, you'll be able to move that joint uh, quite freely. Uh, we also uh, use ice to reduce the swelling, uh, which can help reduce that stiffness as well. And then the last one there is infection. Uh, having an operation that's always a risk, uh, we put you on a prophylactic round of IV antibiotics uh, while you're having your surgery and then in the period after your surgery as, as well, which help reduce the risk of any infection. We also monitor your wound and show you uh, how to look after that after you've been discharged as well, which is part of that process of um, reducing the risk of infection. How you can prepare for your surgery. One of the best things you can do is to start exercising. We'll talk more about this a little bit later, but starting something early can help with your recovery post-op. Decrease your alcohol intake, lose weight if you're overweight and stop smoking. 
Those three things, particularly when combined, can slow down the bone and healing process. Altering your lifestyle before your surgery can help with your recovery. You may be asked to stop some of your medications. In particular, they would be those blood thinning medications uh, and some oral diabetic medications. You may need to, to stop prior to coming in for your surgery. Anything that you do need to stop will come from your surgeon, uh, the anaesthetist or the physician uh, that you're seeing. They're the people that will tell you which ones to stop and when to stop them. Uh, if you do have time, it's a good idea to go and have a dental check uh, just to make sure that uh, you don't need any major dental work, uh, like any tooth extractions or uh, root canal work or anything like that. Uh, you'll be sent for some blood tests and either for an x-ray or a CT scan. You may have already had these done, uh, but this will happen prior to coming in for your surgery as well. Uh, if you haven't seen a physician that's connected to one of our surgeons, then I suggest you go to your GP and just make sure that you're all uh, a clean bill of health prior to coming in. The last one is having your home ready for return. Uh, you'll be on crutches for four to six weeks after having your surgery. So it's a good idea to make sure that there's no trip hazards, no cords, no along uh, corridors, no frayed carpets, uh, making sure that uh, you've got accessible uh, cutlery and crockery. So if you need to uh, make yourself a cup of tea or a sandwich or something, and you're not having to bend down to find pots and pans and cups and saucers. What to bring in with you? If you're on any medication currently, you need to bring that in in the original packaging if you could. If uh, clothing wise, we just suggest anything that's loose fitting, easy to get on and off and comfortable to wear. Uh, you can bring some loose change in with you. Anything of value is best left at home. What happens before your operation? We generally we have a morning list and an afternoon list. If you are the first case on that morning list, you may come in the night before. If you're anywhere else, you'll come in through our day of surgical admissions. If it's an afternoon list, you'll all come in through our day of surgical admissions. Fasting is six to eight hours prior to your surgery. Being a morning, you'll fast from midnight the night before. Otherwise, if it's an afternoon list, you'll have an early morning breakfast and fast after that. Uh, the anaesthetist may call you prior to coming in for surgery, otherwise they'll see you when you're in here and discuss the anaesthetic with you. Uh, a catheter may be inserted prior to your surgery. That may happen in our day of surgical admissions or on the ward before going up. Otherwise it will happen when you're uh, upstairs just about to go in for surgery. Going up to surgery, you'll go on the bed that you're in if you come in the night before. Otherwise, you may go up on a trolley or you'll be walked up if you come through our day of surgical admissions. If you're unable to walk that distance, then a wheelchair will be provided for you. Surgery itself takes between two and two and a half hours, but a round trip up to theatre and back. So that's going in for your surgery, going to recovery and then coming back down onto the ward can be a good four or five hours sometimes. Now we're gonna discuss the forms of analgesia. Uh, these are the ways that we manage your pain in that post-operative period uh, so that you can, one, be comfortable and two, uh, participate in your physiotherapy sessions. In that initial post-op period of time, you may have a patient-controlled analgesia, which, is a, which comes through the drip it has a little button that you can press. It gives you small amounts uh, quite often uh, when you require it. We also use oral analgesia within this period of time as well. One being a long acting painkiller and one being a short acting painkiller. We also use Panadol uh, within this period of time as well. All of these combined do help assist with, your, with managing your pain. Ice is another way that we can manage your pain as well, which helps reduce the swelling. Uh, sometimes anti-inflammatories are used as well. Oral analgesia, as I said, comes in different forms. The strong, long-acting will be given at regular times along with your Panadol. Uh, the strong, quick-acting uh, can be offered to you at regular times as well. Um, Use your pain relief as a preventer, uh, not just a reliever. 
We'll try to get all your analgesia on board prior to having your physio sessions so that you can participate in those. Day one post-op is the first day you'll get up with the physio. So the physio will come in first thing in the morning after you've had some pain relief and get you started with some exercises. You're encouraged to do your exercises every hour or so so that you keep the joint moving and it doesn't get too stiff. When you get up with the physio for the first time, you're generally allowed to put as much weight through your joint as is what's comfortable. If you're doing well, you might sit out of bed for your meals. Otherwise, you'll spend the rest of the day in bed doing your exercises. The physio will generally come around later in the afternoon and the goal is to walk a little bit further than you did in the morning. Day two post-op is generally the first day you're feeling well enough to get up and have a shower. So the nurses will either get you up and shower you and have you waiting for physio or we'll come around and get you up and then leave you for the nurses to have a shower afterwards. You're encouraged to sit out of bed for all of your meals for as long as you can tolerate. Your exercises will be progressed to be more specific to the joint replacement. If you're doing well, you might trial crutches. Otherwise, we'll keep you on a frame or something a little bit more sturdy. Your discharge day will be discussed. You'll often already have an idea of where you want to go, but we'll have a better idea of what day that might be. And if you are doing well, you might go down to the gym, which is just a room located in the middle of the ward. It has stairs and some rails to do some different exercises on. By day three, we want you to be a little bit more independent with your mobility so that you can do things like go to the bathroom and go for short walks on your own. By this stage, you're hopefully on crutches and walking up and down the hallway comfortably. We'll take you down to the gym and go up and down the stairs with your crutches and show you a couple of new standing exercises. If you haven't already been to the toilet, the nurses will make sure that your bowels start working by day three. By day four post-op, we want you to be walking independently on your crutches. You're able to transfer yourself in and out of bed, on and off the toilet, in and out of the bathroom. We want you to be able to independently go up and down the stairs. You've got your exercise program and you know what to be doing at what time of the day at home. If you are doing well, you'll go home day four. If not, you'll just continue doing your physio daily until you do head home. Our discharge goals are for you to be safe. So you need to be able to independently transfer yourself in and out of the bed, on and off a chair. You can bend your hip comfortably between the 60 and 80 degree mark. You can walk at least 30 metres or more with crutches and go up and down stairs. You can sit comfortably in a chair. You attend your basic hygiene needs like go to the shower and get it on and off a toilet. And of course you need to be medically stable before you do head home. So now we're going to discuss rehab versus home. When we're speaking about rehab in this instance, we're specifically speaking about inpatient rehab. Uh, it's not always needed for people to go to inpatient rehab. Uh, there are a few reasons why it might be required. One is if you live alone or you can't uh, have someone to come and give you a hand. Two, if your home is inaccessible, like there's lots of stairs. And three, if you're not meeting those physio goals on a day-to-day -day basis. These uh, were guided by the physios and the surgeon with regards to uh, the idea of inpatient rehab. Uh, and it's easy to organise uh, after having your surgery. It's not something that you can pre-book into. Uh, so I'll be, uh, I can assist you in that process as well. For the first six weeks following your posterior approach to a total hip replacement, there are some movements that you shouldn't do. This is to avoid the small risk of dislocation. The first of these movements is not bending your hip up past a 90 degree angle. So be mindful of low chairs and toilets, as well as not bending down to pick up blankets around by your ankles. It is advised that you don't bend over to pick anything up off the floor. The second of these movements is not crossing your legs past the midline. So if you are sitting in a chair, you're not allowed to cross your legs or your ankles. If you are a side sleeper, it's advised to talk to your surgeon about what his preference might be for this. The third movement is not pivoting or twisting on your hip. So if you are turning around, making sure you're lifting your feet. If you are having an anterior approach, your physio will talk to you about any restrictions that you may have for this. 
To avoid any of the restrictions we just spoke about, you can hire equipment or borrow from friends and family if they have any. This can be things like raised toilet seats, shower stools, high back chairs or pick up sticks. If you do have any crutches, feel free to bring them in so that we can fit them up for you. If you do want to have a look at any equipment, the Able Living Company is what we usually use and the phone number is down the bottom there. Once you go home, it's important to continue with the exercise program that the physio sets out for you. This is to continue to strengthen the muscles around your joint and keep the joint moving. The physio will organise an outpatient follow-up appointment for you about a week later. Again, it's important to continue with your physio as they will progress your exercises and mobility at an appropriate rate. Before you go home, the nurses will tell you how to look after your joint, things like when to take down your dressings. They will also tell you any abnormal signs to look out for and who you should contact for this. So we've come to your discharge day. Uh, discharge time is at 9.30. If for any reason you can't get picked up at 9.30, then uh, you may need to wait in our discharge lounge until you can be picked up. A passenger vehicle is perfect, perfectly safe for you to be discharged home in. Throughout your time with us, the physios and the nurses will show you how to transfer in and out of a car. Uh, and they'll discuss that with you as well. Uh, if you're going to inpatient rehab, then it will be patient transport that will take you there. Uh, and that's not always at a strict time. Common questions. How long will it hurt and swell for? So your pain and swelling can last between four to six weeks. The first couple of days will probably be the sorest. However, this will improve as you're continuing with your rehab. How much can you do and how can you tell if it's too much? Your body will let you know if you're doing too much. If you're waking up and you're really sore and swollen, you're probably doing too much. And this is your body's way of saying slow down. If you wake up and you're feeling relatively good, aim to do a little bit more than you did the day before. You want to gradually increase your daily limit without overdoing it. How long are you on crutches for? You're generally on crutches for four to six weeks. Your physio will guide you when to come off your crutches. You'll generally be on two for a couple of weeks. Then you'll drop down to one and then you'll come off your crutches altogether. How long do you wear the stockings for? The nurses will let you know before you discharge how long you need to wear your stockings for as this is surgeon dependent. When can you drive? You need surgeon clearance before you can drive. And this is regardless of whether you've had a left or a right joint replacement or you drive an automatic or a manual. When can you swim? So you need to make sure your wound is completely healed and it's nicely scarred over before you can swim. This is usually between that four to six week mark. If you do go to rehab though, they'll let you know when you can hop in the water. Should you use hot or cold packs? So use ice packs predominantly after your surgery. This is to help with the swelling and inflammation. You'll probably use cold packs for a couple of weeks after your surgery, particularly after you've been exercising or walking. We don't recommend using heat packs immediately post-operatively around the joint replacement. However, your physio will guide you as to when you can do this again. When can you return to work and other hobbies? So you'll be guided by the physio when you can return to work and when you can return to any hobbies you're wanting to get back to. Let them know what you want to get back to and they can incorporate this into your rehab program. Should you let anyone know you've had a joint replacement? You need to let any medical professional know, particularly if you're going to have any more x-rays or scans done in the future. Let the dentist know because if they're going to do any major dental work or drilling, they'll likely put you on a course of prophylactic antibiotics. And lastly, just let the people at the airport know you've had a joint replacement before you go through the metal detectors. Now we'll go over some exercises. These exercises can be done in the lead up to your surgery to help you prepare. They are very similar to what you might see after your surgery so your body will be familiar with them. You can complete these exercises two times a day for around two minutes each. If that's too much, start with lower repetitions and gradually build up. Find a comfortable position, whether this is on your couch or on your bed, so you can complete the exercises. The first exercise is heel slides. For this exercise, slide your heel up towards your bottom as far as what's comfortable. 
The next exercise is called quads over fulcrum. For this exercise, roll up a couple of towels and place them under your knee. Lift your heel up off the ground, straightening the leg and keep the knee in contact with the towel. The next exercise is called a bridge. For this exercise, bend up both of your knees, push through your heels, squeeze through the bottom and try and lift up off the bed. This exercise is good for your bed mobility. The next exercise is hip abduction. For this exercise, slide the operated leg out to the side and back in. The next exercise is calf raises. Holding onto the back of the chair, slowly raise up onto your tippy toes and back down. The next exercise is a calf stretch. Holding onto the back of the chair, step your operated leg backwards and lean forward so that you feel a stretch up the back of your leg. The next exercise is hip flexion. Holding onto the back of a chair, lift your operated leg up and down from the hip. The next exercise is hip abduction. Holding onto a chair, Lift your leg out towards the side. The next exercise is hip extension. Holding onto the back of a chair and keeping yourself up nice and straight, straighten your operated leg out behind you. The next exercise is mini squats. Holding onto the back of the chair, bend at the knees, lowering yourself down. Imagine you're trying to sit down on a chair. Prehabilitation is commencing an exercise program as early as possible before your joint replacement. This is to strengthen any muscles around the joint and increase your mobility as much as possible. This will help you achieve optimal outcomes following your joint replacement. It can include things like going to the gym and doing a gym program, riding on an exercise bike, doing hydrotherapy, walking, or even some of the exercises we just spoke about. We don't wanna aggravate your joint any more than we need to before your joint replacement. So pick something that works for you and stick with that. Thanks for watching. We've pretty much gone through uh, all of the information that we need to, to give to you. If you've got any questions, there's some phone numbers there that you can contact us if you need to. There's a uh, direct ward number uh, for the unit manager, there's my own phone number under orthopedic case manager, or there's uh, the physiotherapist number as well. There's a few different numbers there. Uh, if you need to, if you've got any questions prior to coming in, otherwise we'll see you when you come in for your surgery. Thanks.